Hello, loved ones. Thank you for joining us today. And if you're new to the channel, then welcome to the family. Today, it is our intent to review Merit at First Sight, Season 14, Episode 12. Please subscribe so that you can be part of the congregation. And if you want to be part of the conversation, then shout out in the comments section. If you are excited about a particular Merit at First Sight couple, then see the timestamps in the description box. Make sure that you stay until the end so that you can get fuel you can use, which is a spiritual truth to help you throughout the week. Welcome to Fuel by Intentions, where we talk about faith, family, finances, fitness, and fun. Sponsored by Bynum's Business Solutions, where the right fit is made simple. We specialize in tips, tools, and strategies designed to help you achieve your financial health so that you can take control of how you spend your money so that you can spend more time with your family, friends, and doing the things you love. So let's jump right into the video. Well, Hello, John. How are you doing today? I am doing fine. I am doing fine. Well, we are back again. We had one week off and now we are back for another Married at First Sight review. Are you ready for this? I am ready. So we're going to start off this episode like we always do, reviewing the title. The title of this episode was Settling In or Just Settling. Do you think that what we saw on the show was representation of the title? Yes, uh, when you do it, I, I think it goes to each individual couple. So if I were to look at uh, Mark and Lizzie, I would say, just settle. If I were to look at Olajuwon and Katina, I would say settling in. If I was to look at Noe and Steve, I would just say settling. And if I were to look at Michael and Jasmina, I would say settling in. Yes, I agree with your assessment of that. I did enjoy the title. We know that it was taken from Noy's social media post, and I like that. But I also like because we can actually apply it to the couples, and I felt like we saw them either settling or settling in. So great job, Married at First Sight. You gave us a title that we can appreciate. I really think that the title of a show is just like the cover of a book or the chapter of a book, uh, the, the chapter title in a book. It kind of tells you what you're going to be in for as you review this episode. So I thought it was a great title. What do you think about our first couple, Lindsay and Mark? Oh, wow. You know, I, I, I see uh, Mark putting forth his efforts to, uh, uh, get Lindsay more organized. So he decides to make an organization board. And Lindsay, you know, uh, surprisingly goes for it. She says, okay, I'll go, I'll go with that. And then later on, you find out that Mark doesn't stick to the stuff that he put on the organization board. And Lindsay gets livid about it, about, okay, you go ahead and you make this organization board, but you don't even stick to the organization board. So she gets on Mark, uh, Mark's case for not following through. And then we'll find out that, you know, when they start talking about uh, uh, Lindsay throws Mark a party and she makes a shark suit for the cats because, you know, celebrating Mark being a shark and they're having dinner and she makes this nice romantic dinner and it, uh, be, Mark, you know, had previously had a conversation with his friend about how he should handle Lindsay. And I guess that was all that was on his mind because, you know, as opposed to, you know, uh, observing the effort that she put through to make it such a romantic evening for their dinner and everything like that, the first thing that comes on, out of his mouth is the issues that they need to resolve for their relationship. So that really killed the dinner and the atmosphere and the romance that, uh, Lindsay was trying to create and she was livid because of that because Mark doesn't have a sense of timing nor does he uh, even look at you know he's blinded to to his side of everything so he can't see from her side so so it is from Lindsay's uh, viewpoint 
So I think with this couple, there's a lot of things that's going on. Mark tells his friends that it seems like he's on a roller coaster ride when he's with Lindsay. Uh, you know, they have high ups and they have low downs. And, you know, I don't know if he has more higher ups or lower downs, but really I think Mark is just trying to see if this relationship could endure with such highs and lows. So I guess we'll, we'll, we'll find out in the end. One thing Lindsay does say uh, uh, to Mark is, Mark, it would just be nice if you would just put your phone away when we're having our private conversation because I want, you know, I want you to focus on me when it's our time. So Mark is usually interrupted by family and, you know, texting him about this and going to these different emergencies. And Lindsay doesn't want to have anything to do with that. She says, our time is our time. So I see this couple uh, really, you know, having problems and we'll just wait and see if these problems will ever be resolved. <laughs> yes, when they made their budget before leaving home and went to the grocery store, and then of course, Lindsay went over budget and she said mm -hmm. that she went over budget by 40%, 40% over budget. Now their budget was $150. So I don't know if that's 150 a week or 150 a month or how much they were budgeting for for that. But 40% is a lot, especially taking it in that Mark doesn't have a job. So of course he wants to stay within the budget that we agreed on. Usually uh -huh. when you go to the grocery store with a list, you do pretty well, but never go hungry because I've done that. And now I'm like, I came in here for the three things on my list. And now I got this buggy full of things and you can spend $150 really, really quick. I have actually spent $150. And when I came back, I'm like, do I even got things to make a meal? Like, like I don't even know if I have things to make a meal with. But Lindsay and eating a piece of corn, out of all the things that you could have eaten in the grocery store, I thought that the piece of corn, that's when I don't know if Lindsay is doing semantics and trying to play it up for the camera. And I'm like, I don't even know if it's considered stealing. Cause I remember, quite a long time ago, this probably is gonna age me, there was someone who ate a grape in the grocery store and they actually went to jail for eating the grape because they ate it without paying for it because you can't weigh the grape that you ate. You know, so <laughs> I don't think that you should eat in the grocery store like that. I think it's actually tacky, but I'm not sure if Lindsay was playing it up for the camera. And I don't know if the corn was two, four dollars, so she still was able to pay for it or if it was something that needed to be weighed. Lindsay got on my nerves. Oh uh. my God. I was just like, do you, do you like this? Do you like this? Do you like that? Just ask him. He already told you before you left home, I will eat this vegetable and this vegetable. So while you're badgering him in the store, I don't know. That would be so irritating to me. Like somebody is just constantly in your ear. That that would have sent me up the roof. And then when they are getting ready to take photo shoots, I love that Mark just kind of played it off with the photographer. You know, my wife's not here right now, but we're gonna go ahead and get started, you know? He tried to play it off, not knowing that Lindsay was gonna come and interrupt the shoot. I do like that even though they were in a tension field situation, that he let her know, hey, I do want you to stay. I want you to take the pictures with me. Why don't you just take the pictures? And he said that Lindsay can turn it off and then turn it back on, go ahead and get through a task and then be resumed being mad again. And oh my God, I was like, that's me. <laughs> like me and Lindsay actually have something in common because I can take an intermission, time out, intermission. We're happy, we're loving again. Do you need me to make your plate? What do you need for me to do? Then turn it back on, game on. And a lot of wow. times I do that when there is, we gotta go somewhere, gotta be somewhere, cause you don't wanna ruin the time for other people. Cause it is very difficult when someone is around and there's a couple that is just not in a good mood. Now, if it's that couple time and y'all are ready to kind of help them work through that issue, that's something different. But if that is not the time or the place, and there is a couple that is putting a rain on everybody's parade, like yeah. Satina and Elijah Wan, 
A lot of people want you to just kept it quiet, kept it cute, dealt with it later. But of course, uh -huh. he doesn't have that personality. But I was cracking up because I can definitely do that. And I thought it was interesting when Mark talked to Erica and he was saying that he hasn't been away from Lindsay long enough to miss her, uh -huh. but he doesn't know if he um, if he can't live without her, and but that he did have feelings for Lindsay. And I think that we can see that because I think that's why Mark is taking a lot of the Lindsay because he sees that there are good things about her. They, she sees that how it could be if she could just tone it down. And I think that that was what yielded the conversation at dinner, that this is just on his mind and he just wanted to kind of talk about it. But I, I like that he is going through that dynamic where he can see the good and the bad. And Lindsay, when she said that Mark does not stick to his agreements, that really struck me because those are the kind of things that we don't get to see. We can't see that he's not sticking to it. You know, the camera's not there all the time. But if Mark is making up these things for them to do, and then he is not following through, I can, I will agree with Lindsay. That is very, very frustrating. And then when he ruined $250 of her clothes, I'm like, okay, you got to tell me more about these outfits. Is it my favorite outfit? One that I wear a lot? You know, does she have a lot of clothes? Is she going to miss it? And if it was in the washer, then you know it's something that you actually wear. Because you know we oh, we have a lot of clothes, but only a couple of them are in rotation. So I'm going to say that this was something that she really, really liked because it was in the laundry. So we know it's in that clothes rotation. But I do agree with Mark. He was like, I apologize. I don't, I like, he didn't know what else to do. And she's just like, you're not taking responsibility. Well, what else do you want him to do? I mean, he needs to help you replenish that clothes. But once somebody says that they're sorry, like they're, I know sorry sometimes is just not enough, but what, what else can you do? And then at the table, when she was like, you don't take accountability and you don't take responsibility. I'm like, Lindsay, who, who, what universe are you living in? Are you talking to Mark? Because that is exactly what you do. So you need to point those fingers back at yourself and you are the one who don't take accountability or responsibility. And then when she grabbed him like a kid and she oh, even said it, she said, I grabbed him because he doesn't focus and I need it. For one thing, he was all in that conversation. He was very focused. He's the one who started the conversation. Yeah. That's what you do to your kid. You grab your kid by the arm and say, listen to me. Do you hear me? You don't do that to your husband. Uh -huh. So in that moment, she really was treating him like a kid. But I don't know. I still have hope because he has feelings for her. He has feelings for her and he's vocalized that to Erica. So I think that, you know, he sees more of the good than the bad because you have to it, it something has to be keeping you there. So I think that they still have a chance to make it because he has feelings for her. And, and I think she has feelings for him too, but I think that it's even more important that he has feelings for her. Yeah, I think, I think she really does have feelings for him and she's indicated it over and over again. Remember, she was the first one to tell the, the ladies that she was in love with her husband. So, so yeah, the feelings are there. It's just that she doesn't know how to, she doesn't know how to listen uh, because their, their problem is communication. And she doesn't really listen to what Mark is saying to her. She's so on the defensive until when he's even telling her the truth, she doesn't hear it. So uh, it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be a challenge for this couple to make it, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll see if they're able to work things out. What did you think about our next couple, Katina and Elijah Warren? You know, this was one of my favorite couples in the beginning, but you know, I see them as being on a quote unquote 
roller coaster ride. This time, okay, after the last blow up with uh, a large one looking at Katina's phone in the dating app episode, but now we find out that they have the taco night and Katina plans this nice taco night. And, and then they make up and they're all lovey-dovey again and everything is forgotten. So, you know, right now they are, they're in heaven. But, you know, I, I know that at any point in time, Elijah one can go off again and boom, then they're gone. So Elijah one, you know, he goes and he talks to his coach, Coach Max. And he talks to coach and say, Coach Mac, you know how I am. You know, people, you know, when they first talk to me, they don't like, you know, they don't like what they see. But once they get to know me, you know, they find out that I'm a really nice guy. And Coach Mac said, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. He says, but, you know, uh, sometimes you can say something that you may not be able to take back. So Coach Mac was giving Elijah one a little bit of caution that he shouldn't be so freely with what he says because especially in a marriage relationship it could burn him because coach max says the marriage vows are supposed are sacred and he talked about you have to consider the sanctity and those are the words that he used the sanctity of marriage so she he was he was putting that caution flag on uh, a large one that you need to be more careful of what you say in, in this particular situation. So I have high props for uh, Coach Mack and, uh, and the comments that he had for Olajuwon. But you know, when Olajuwon talked to Michael, Olajuwon was said because of the dating app uh, episode that he didn't trust Katina. So, uh, you know, you know, is that off again, on again, on again thing. So, I guess I guess we'll wait and see. When Katina went to talk to Jasmina and Michael, I love that Jasmina was considerate of Katina and put up the dog. I am uh -huh. afraid of dogs, but a lot of times dog lovers, they want you, oh, you know, he's not gonna bite, he's not. Come on now, let's let me be in my own space. I like that she was like, you know what, pet the dog. I know you don't like him, I'm gonna put him up. Especially since she knew that Katina was in a very emotional state. So you don't need another yes. preoccupation around you when you're already dealing with something that is a big deal. In that whole conversation, what really got under my skin was Katina said, when I do this one thing wrong, he is gonna hold it against me. And I really did not like that she has convinced herself that she did something wrong. You had an app on your phone that you were not using, that you did not get rid of. Now, if you were married for 10 years, if you were engaged for a year and you still had that on your phone, okay, maybe. But you only know the man for less than eight weeks. You don't use the app. It didn't sound like she's even signed on to the app. So I do not like that she is convinced that she did something wrong. And I don't think that another person should have that much authority over you to make you think you've done something wrong when you have not. I did not like that. Now, I'm gonna sound like I'm contradicting myself, but I'm not. Uh -huh. When they apologize and, you know, they apologize to one another, I didn't have a problem with that because sometimes you need to just go along to get along. And if that's what that person's need, then just give it to them so that you can move on. I love that Katina said, today is a new day. And I felt like what she was saying is, you know what? We're gonna sweep that as water on the bridge and we are gonna keep this train moving. And <laughs> sometimes in marriage, that is what you have to do. I generally look at a situation that I'm going through and I think to myself, first, am I gonna care about this five years down the road? Because if I'm not gonna, if this is not gonna matter five years down the road, then why am I gonna be all upset about it right now? And sometimes when that just does not work, I think to myself, am I gonna leave him? Am I gonna leave him for this? Because if I'm not gonna leave him for this, then why am I gonna waste the time and the energy to be all riled up for how long 
it's going to take me to be riled up for us to get back on a smooth road. So sometimes you just got to make those evaluations in order to progress in your marriage and in your relationship. So I really do like that they were able to come together, that they were able to talk. I love that they were able to kiss. It sounds like he may have apologized to her. And I, the only thing I don't like is that we don't get to see that. So a lot of times how they resolve those issues, they do it in the comfort of their own home, behind closed doors, how dare they? Yeah. And we as the viewers don't get to see it. Because I would really like to see how Katina is able to calm him down and be able to then begin a rational conversation. The only thing I say about that is Elijah Wan, I love it. He is always willing to take responsibility. He'll say things like, you know, I should have responded differently or I should not have acted like that. And I love that. But now we need to see some action. Stop saying it and actually do it. I'm gonna try to give him some slack because eight weeks is not a long time to change a personality trait that is embedded within you. But we only have eight weeks, Elijah Wan, so we need to see some change in eight weeks. It's a show. You don't have a year to change. We need to see the change while the show is going on. So get it together, brother. Get it together. I like when Katina talked to her sister-in-law. The sister-in-laws were on it this week. They got a lot of shine. But Katina talked to her sister-in-law, Anna. I'm not sure how old Anna is because I'm not sure I would ever ask my sister-in-law. I'm assuming that she's married to Katina's brother. So I'm not sure, can I see your husband, a picture of your husband with his shirt off? I'm not sure that that would come up. That, I, I didn't really care for that. But Katina showed her the picture and she thought that he, yeah, he looks nice. So I don't think that I would ask that. I thought that was really, really weird. And it's interesting. I think it's a producer question about the consummation of your marriage because they think that we really want to know that. And Katina, of course, she seems like she's all in and it's really Elijah Wan who doesn't want to. And some people think that Elijah Wan is faking, that he's really Isaac and he's just kind of hiding himself. But I think Elijah Wan is really trying to change. But I believe people until I can't believe people. I believed Clara and Ryan when they said they hadn't consummated their marriage. Some people believe that Katina and Elijah Wan have, they're just not saying it on camera. I don't think that they have. I'm gonna just take them at face value as to what they say. And I think that Elijah Wan is being genuine. I think he wants to do something different. I think that he wants this relationship to be different and he wants this relationship to work. So I admire him. I think it's a respect issue. If him and Katina don't work out, which I hope they do, if he hasn't violated her in that way, then she gets to take, could continue to keep that pride. And then if they don't do it, they don't have to talk about it on camera. So I admire the situation and it sounds like it's more him because she would be willing if he was open to it. I love the taco night. I love finding out like who a person is and a little bit about their life. So I really love that they went back and told us something about their history. Of course, Katina, I wouldn't even imagine that she didn't like school. And of course, mama bears, they always come through for you. Cause when she said her mom was like, uh-uh, she can't stay at home and she, said it like my mom knew my personality and she knew that wouldn't work for me so she got at home suspension at school so it turned into at school suspension and then elijah Wan saying that he was in an activity and his buddies them skipping class i thought that that was really really cute so i am going to ask you what is your favorite high school memory well, I was a, a track athlete and I remember I was a high jumper and I broke the school record. And uh, that was my high point. That was my high point. So after breaking the school record, I still have that record today. So that's still my high point. Wow, wow. So you're saying that the record is still, you still hold the record for that, that, that event at your high school? Yes. Wow, that is awesome. I would say my high school moment is I was in dance and I was in drill team. 
my entire high school career. And at the end of the year, we would do a Buet review. That was what our drill team was called. And all through the year, every single game, you had a football buddy, because the football team, that was the life of the whole town, a small town. And you had to bring the football boys buddies. You had to bring them gifts every, every Friday. You had to bring wow. your football buddy a gift because he's right. going to play on Friday. But once a year at the View It Review, which was our annual event, when you were a senior, then your football buddy presented you to the school for that, for that event. And it's a very dressed up, you know, formal event at the beginning of the show that you get presented as a senior. So I'd have to say that that was my greatest high school moment is just, you know, full circle. We encouraged them and now they were encouraging us. For this couple, the jury is still out. I think they're gonna make it because I think they resolve issues and I think their relationship mirrors what I've seen. Some people have more perfect relationships, but what I've seen, the ups and downs in a relationship and they're learning how to work through their differences and their issues. So I have a lot of hope for Katina and Elijah Warren. So what did you think about our third couple, Noi and Steve? Well, I guess, you know, when I think of Noe, I'm starting to call her Miss Annoyed because she's starting to annoy me. Uh, well, first we find out that uh, Steve, you know, uh, he, he, he's, he's considering Noe, so he's washing her dog with her. They're washing the dog together, Sasha, and they're having, you know, he's doing, putting the extra effort in and washing his dog and they take it to a, 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 a place that you can go ahead and wash dogs and you can uh, blow dry them and everything like that. And they're having a real good time. So we see that Steve is making extra effort to keep her pleased. Only thing I'm going to bring up though, is I have to bring up, bring up the part about uh, in the past, the dog sleeping in the bed with them. You know, as soon as she would have told me as a man that we had to have her dog sleeping in the bed between us, I would have put my foot down and said, oh no, you know, I understand that you had your dog before I came into the picture, but now I'm your husband and I share our bedroom with no one or no thing. So uh, I think Steve should have put his foot down then. Uh, another thing that I see here is Steve uh, was talking to Mark and Steve told Mark, he said, why should I have to work? I have money in the bank. You know, why should I have to work? But I think regardless of the amount of money that Steve has in the bank, Noe looks long term. So she's saying, OK, we're going to be married when I hope to be life, you know, a lifetime. So if we're going to be married for a lifetime, that money that you have in the bank will not last. We need you to have money coming in. And that's why I think you need to have a steady job. So I think that's the standpoint that Moy is looking at it from. And that's why I think she gets so annoyed with Steve when he doesn't seem like he wants to commit to a full-time job. Uh, another thing that Noy did, why I really call her Miss Annoying Noy, is she says, after the decision day, if they say yes, she will not move in with Steve. She would want to keep her apartment and they live in two separate entities and they just share different apartments. I don't go with that. I, I feel that that's basically saying, okay, I want to keep one foot out and one foot into our relationship. Just in case I need to exit, I have a place to stay and I don't have to worry about it. So when you're talking about total commitment, I think no ways looking, looking at their situation from the standpoint that it may not work more than she's looking at it from the standpoint that their relationship will endure. So I, I think that's going to be a problem uh, in their relationship. So that's that's what I have about Noy and Steve. The beach scene when when Steve and Mark were on the beach, for one thing, neither one of them have a job. So it looked like it was daytime. They have time to kick around the ball with no <laughs> during the day. But it was absolutely beautiful. Oh my God, that was such a beautiful, it just looked so serene and peaceful. And I love the little, I love the games. I, I, I love the games. I love when, 
Um, Steve said, well, whoever doesn't catch the pass, they got to go jump in the water. And I was yeah. hoping that Steve lost since he's the one who made it up. And he was a great sport. He just jumped in the water, you know. <laughs> and, he just, you know? and I love that Mark made a joke about it. Like, okay, thanks for the sunglasses. I love the playfulness. I love to see just people interacting with one another, having such, such a good time. I love that. When Steve decided to split the household duties between him and Noi, I don't know what I feel about that because it looked like it might have been on a Saturday. So if it's on a Saturday, okay, you know what? You take a bathroom, I take a bathroom, we can get through with it and then we can go on about our day. But I wasn't sure if he was splitting the household chores just through the week. And you know, her thing is he's doing more for sushi than she is. And it didn't sound like she wanted to take any of sushi's duties. But if it's during yes. the week, I do think that if if Steve has more flexibility than she does because she is working a traditional eight to five, then he should do more so that we can both get off and then we can then enjoy each other. But I did not like that she cursed at him. Yes. I cannot imagine a time that I am gonna curse at my husband. And I don't know, maybe it's just a shocker to me because I don't curse and that just wouldn't be a playful moment for me. And I don't think that you should curse at your husband on national TV. But, you know, he didn't have a reaction about it. So maybe he wasn't as offended as, as I was. But I thought that that was disrespectful of her to be cussing at her husband. And then her not wanting to move in with him. The thing I didn't like about that was she didn't give him a reason. He's like, so why? So what is wrong? So why do you, you gotta communicate so that you can work through whatever the issue is. He can relate it. You guys can understand it as a couple. Now, I have been watching Married at First Sight for quite a while. So I can understand her apprehension because we see last year that Gil moved out of his apartment because he wanted to make a go at it and from his thing is he sold his furniture and all of this kind of stuff and moved into her place. And then when it didn't work out a few months later, after decision day, then he was all on Instagram. You know, I lost my place. I got to start over. So I understand the apprehension. I do see your point of being one foot in and one foot out, but this is such a unique situation and her situation is so different. When it didn't work out for Jose and Rachel, Rachel went home to her mom where she, you know, her mom. So it wasn't like she had to change her life. Life went back normal. But if you give up your apartment and then you try to go back to that apartment, sometimes it's not available or the rent is more, you know, more expensive. But I feel like if that was the issue, then she needs to talk about that and then they work it out as a couple as to how we're gonna do it. Maybe she could sublease it to someone for you know three months, six months or whatever. So then she would have that option to rebound if she needed to, since they really kind of don't know each other. I love when she was talking to her sister, Saracha, and she was so frustrated talking about her and Steve's relationship. And this is how you can tell that she was frustrated because when Sriracha was like, so what are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do about it now? How are you gonna handle that? She said, I don't know, Michael. <laughs> 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 and she called him by his name and was finished with <laughs> Sriracha. I'm like, oh my God, she is really upset. It reminded me when your mom uses your full name when they're trying to call you to do something or when you've done something and they include your middle name. And we know that Sriracha is gonna lean to her sister's side because that's what we do for family. So I like that she was able to be comforting. And it was so funny when Noy was talking about, well, you know, he wants me to split the chores. I think she said, well, doesn't he need to split a job? Like get a job? Like, you know, just really <laughs> go in for your family and you can like kind of pull for them in a, in a very good way. So I really love to see that, that sibling thing going on. 
And then Steve talked to his sister-in-law. The sister-in-laws, I mean, they had it going on. This episode, I think he has a sister. So I was really surprised that he talked to his sister-in-law and not his sister. But I don't know, uh -huh. maybe he thinks he's kind of similar to his brother. So maybe, I don't know, but I love it. I love when families are really able to merge as one. So I love that he went to her for advice. And I thought she gave him some excellent advice because he indicated that Noi had posted on social media again. And he asked her if the uh -huh. post was about him and Noi said no. And the sister-in-law says, then you have to take it for what it is. If she said no, then take it as no. And I feel like sometimes you just have to believe, you have to believe somebody until you can't believe them anymore. And I feel like, I know that the post is still gonna bother him because I think that we've already seen a clip where he's talking about it next week, unless it's a new post next week. You never know about Noi. But I think you just have to believe them until you can't believe them anymore. And sometimes it's hard because it gets into your head so I can't wait to see how he handles that. If next week we're talking about the same post that we're talking about this week, or if we're talking about a different post. And also I love the advice from the sister-in-law when she said, well, you've already indicated that Noi needs time to herself. So you're either gonna give her that time in the space that she needs, or she's gonna take it. And understanding your spouse and how they work and what they need is really important. And I think that he is gonna have to give her her space or like the sister said, she's gonna take it. And if she has a whole apartment over there waiting, she will have a place to take it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, the reason why Steve may not have talked to her, his sister uh, is that she may not have been married and his sister-in-law we know is married. So he's talking to a person and he's trying to get it from a marriage standpoint. So I think that may have been something that happened there. But uh, yeah, I know that uh, when Steve was still upset with Noe uh, wanting to live separately, but I think the biggest thing about her having her separate space wasn't the fact that she just uh, had that separate space and wanted to keep it. It was the, the question that he asked and still asks today is why? What's the reason? See, if she could give him the reason, maybe he would have been, no, I, I agree with you. Then you should keep it temporarily. But she never gave him a reason why. What do you think about our fourth couple, Jasmina and Michael? Oh my God. You know what? I'm rooting for Jasmine and Michael. I am truly rooting for Jasmine and Michael. I love the fact that uh, Michael is teaching Jasmine how to drive. And you know, he's taking it upon himself to be the driving instructor. And he told her he's going to act as a real instructor. So what he did first is he made her take uh, he asked her driving questions or test questions off of a driving test and she did excellent she did excellent so uh after she passed that with flying colors he did the road test and he sat on the side as a, a passenger train you know uh instructor watching her drive made sure that she checked her mirrors and everything he was all seat belted. He wouldn't let her get away with anything. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then she goes driving and, and, you know, she turns when she does her turns and like new drivers do this a lot. They turn too quickly. You know, they put their foot on the gas and they just turn too quickly when they're, and you know, you tell her to slow down, slow down and, and stuff. But, uh, it really went well and she hit the brakes real hard. And, oops, oops, you know, just like any beginning driver, but he was good. He was calm, he was collective and, and, and uh, uh, very corrective and, 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 you know, told her 
uh, what she needed to do. And I think he calmed her down. He kept her at ease. But he told her she seemed to be more confident than he was. I mean, he was a guy that was nervous because he was nervous because she was so calm. He expected her to be. So he wanted to make sure she was focused. He said, hey, you're going to have to be focused on this. OK, but she did do that. But I just like the fact that uh, Michael was taking control uh, uh, of something, you know, seeing him in that control uh, uh, state and seeing her in that vulnerable state where she had to be subordinate to him. And, and, and she was and it went well and they laughed a lot during the driving exercise. So I, I thought that that went really well. And in the end, Michael had to give her a score and he gave her a C. <laughs> So, the C for her first time out. So he gave her a grade of a C. So he said she passed. <laughs> but uh, again, too, I like when Michael talked to his sister, Claire, and he was talking to Claire about his relationship with Jasmine and how it was going. And Michael was optimistic. I mean, very optimistic. He says, you know, when you, you look at their troubled past and how uh, hurdles that they had to overcome, but now you see the joy and the laughter. And he says, they're moving in. They moved into that friend state and, and you know, they haven't uh, been intimate yet. And he and his sister asked him, you guys, have you been intimate yet? No. Nope. We haven't been intimate yet. So his sister said, well, you know, you the man, you need to make, you need to make the move. It can be subtle moves, but hey, you, you need to make the move. And I agree with his sister. If there's going to be any romance in this relationship, he's going to have to be the man enough to go ahead and make the move and see if she'll go with it. So, you know, she'll either accept the move, you know, done at the right time, she should be accepting. And if not, he'll understand and they can talk about it. But no, he, he needs to go and make that move. So Michael, go make that move. <laughs> uh, Jasmine, when Jasmina talked to her mother, she said that there was no romance between uh, she and Michael. So I think that only means that she's still waiting for Michael to make that move. And uh, I like when uh, Michael even decided to cook for Jasmina. Uh, you know, he's he's making that, you know, he's making that first move again. He's cooking for her. He's whining. He's dining her. And he asked her, how was the food? And she says, a little bit salty, but it was good. <laughs> so they're still playful, you know, even in the kitchen. In, even in the kitchen, excuse me. But you know what? They have a lot of fun together. And you can see it, and people from the outside can see it. So they're really having a good time. They're looking for the spark, but I think the spark is coming. I think this is what you would call a slow burn. And we're just waiting for that, that fire to slowly burn. But I think what, so what I'm optimistic about is that it's burning. That fire is burning. So I can't wait to see the results. Yes, I cannot believe that Michael ate some doggy treats. <laughs> what? I'm like, oh my, like, really? Like, dude, I'm like, I don't know. That was gross to me. Definitely, definitely. I love that he was teaching Jasmina how to drive. And I love that he initiated the conversation. And he is the one who put it forth to her. And she accepted another one of Michael's ideas even though <laughs> this is gonna be very challenging for her i think he put a good argument about it which kind of yeah. makes sense now because at the beginning he said that he had changed his work schedule so that he could meet the demands of their dog and i didn't know what that means but now maybe it makes more sense because now since he has to drive everywhere and i don't know sounds like she rides the bus to work or take some types of public transportation to work now that really makes sense but i was really glad that she took his recommendation about learning to drive in spite of her fears because i have been in a car accident it is very traumatic and if you don't know how to drive already before you even get it i mean like that is a very serious traumatic situation and she sounded like she had been in more than one car accident so that's uh -huh. even more traumatic so i was really glad that she was open to the idea it was so funny when she said 
Why are you holding on? I did not like that Michael gave her a seat. I'm like, how dare you give her a C? She has put her heart and soul into this. She is conquering her fears. She went along with your idea. I thought that she did really well in the parking lot for her first time. I feel like he should have given her a higher score. This whole episode for me was about emotional connection. When Michael talked to his sister Claire and he was saying everything is going good but if it reverts back and we turn from the for we turn back to where it was then I don't think I'm gonna be able to say yes on decision day and then Jasmina when she talked to her mom and she was saying that she is not emotionally connected to him I think that that would be a cause for concern but there was some redemption because when they were cooking, Jasmina actually leaned on Michael's back when he was cooking. And I feel like that is the way you're gonna develop those emotional connections. I do not agree with Claire. I do not think that Michael should make a move on Jasmina to see when she, if she's ready to reciprocate it. I think if he does that, that Jasmina may see that as disrespectful because they verbally talked about this before they talked about it with dr viviana jasmina said that she has expressed to michael that she likes to take things slow and she already knows that michael is waiting for her to give him the go-ahead and okay and we know how jasmina gets when she has said something and you do not do what she said And as it relates to her body, I think that he should just continue to play it cool. But Jasmina said the key words because she said that if they continue down the route that they are doing, that she believes that emotional connection will come. And I think that is just how it is. Cause you know, you have that good guy friend and you guys are just hanging out and kicking it and having fun and laughing. And then you wake up one morning and you're like, when did this good guy friend turn into somebody that I am just emotionally head over heels for? So if they just continue down the route, I think that it will organically happen and she will develop the feelings for him because I think that he already has feelings for her. I love that they were cooking in the kitchen. And I love that again, she allowed Michael to take the lead and make the dinner. And I love that at the end when he said like, is it good, how's it taste? And she did have her little critique, but she did the delicious dance. Cause at the end she was just like, you know how you got that good food and it tastes good and you got to do a little two step. She did the delicious dance, which gave him the satisfaction that she, he needed that, hey, this, I did a good job. And I think he used, he said, this is not made with measurements. It's made with love or, or passion. I forgot the word that he used, but I really like that. But that was just like some fun banner. This couple, oh God, Jasmina, please, please get it together so that you guys can stay on this route. Cause I think that Michael would say yes. I think Jasmina would be the one that says no. So I hope that she develops this emotional connection that she needs in order to say yes on decision day, because I think that they, there is a lot of hope and there is a lot of promise and they are an enjoyable couple to watch. So Jasmina and Michael, if you guys are watching this, whether you stay together or not, it is not too late because you can't get a divorce that fast. You need (laughs) to stay together. You guys are a great couple. And you, I can't believe it. This rounds out another episode. So John, who are your yes on decision day predictions? My yes are going to be Jasmina and Michael and Elijah Wan and Katina. 
My yes on decision day prediction is four for four. I think all four couples will say yes on decision day. This week, our fuel you can use comes from 2 Timothy 2.15, which says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And this is inspired by Katina and her feeling that she was wrong for having the app on her phone. We all should learn the word of God for ourselves so that no one can tell us what is right or wrong within the word of God. We should study to show ourselves approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed so that we will know God's word for ourselves and we can rightly divide the word of truth. That was really disturbing that he could change her opinion on that. I know there's many things that I have been taught and when I study scripture, I realize that those things are not true. So study to show yourself approved so that God can speak to you and you can determine what is right and wrong based on God's standards. Well, that puts another episode in the books. What do you think? What do you think about Lindsay and Mark? Do you think that they should stay on this roller coaster ride? What do you think about Jasmina and Michael? Will they ever get the emotional connection? Will Elijah Wan ever learn how to handle his disappointments? And what do you think about Noe not wanting to move in with Steve? Let us know your opinion. Shout out in the comments section. Well, John, I cannot believe that this rounds out another episode. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. <laughs> Well, we will see you guys on the next episode. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, live with intention. Be intentional.